In this video, I'm not only gonna show you how to make this Vox animation, but throughout the video, I'm also gonna talk about a lot of the techniques that Vox use when designing and creating their own animations. And if you're new to After Effects or you just wanna learn more about how to create animations, then you can also check out my Animation Master course. It'll take you from an absolute beginner never used After Effects before, right through to creating some really cool and advanced looking animations. I cover maps, graphics, titles, 2D animations. Plus I walk you through a lot of the techniques from animated videos that you see online. So if you're someone who watches Vox videos, for instance, and you really like the way they make their animations, then my course will really help teach you the fundamentals of how you create animation and how you can turn your concept into an actual video. Now again, if you wanna check out that, there'll be a link down in the description below. Now this is an actual Vox animation that I've seen in one of their videos. I've modified it slightly by adding in a few different things here like the paper tear effect and also animating the camera in a slightly different way. But without watching the Vox video, you kind of already get that feeling like this is a Vox animation. Now, one thing they use or they have used in videos is they create depth through various layering. I talk a lot about this in our Animation Master course. Now this paper tear effect, I've just got this texture here, which is a PNG image, and you can find these online. I source mine from Envato Elements, and we can use this to basically create a background. So the first thing I wanna do is create a new composition here and then I can drag in my paper tear effect. Now the first thing that I find when you're designing any sort of animation, you want to try and get the layout first before you start animating anything. So you want to start getting all your layers together. So I'm going to create another layer here and this is going to become my background. Something else I can also start to do is think about layering, right? Again, they layer all these different elements to not only sort of draw your eye to the things that they're speaking about, but it also makes it much more visually interesting. So here we've got kind of lots of different layers going. We've got a background, we've got this water layer, a boat layer, then we've got this paper graphic, and then we've kind of got this text. And then through the animation of the camera, which we're gonna get into, we can kind of focus in or draw the attention of the viewer to one specific area of that animation and then sort of bring the camera out to reveal the other part of that. So if I add a drop shadow to this, what I can actually do is just drag up on the softness. Straight away, without having any graphics in there, it kind of already gives us a lot more depth to our image, right? We've already created a bit of that depth effect without adding anything else to it. Now, one other thing that I also got from Envato Elements was I got this picture of a boat. If you wanna check out Envato Elements for yourself, I'll add a link down in the description. That gives you 50% off when you sign up to an annual subscription. It's a service I use all the time because it just means getting images like this. I don't have to worry about the commercial aspect of it. And with the unlimited downloads, I can just download as much as I like. I don't have to worry about you know the next project that I'm gonna be working on. I know I can always get the various assets I need. So with this, what I've also done is I've also got a image of just the ocean here. It's just like a, basically just a water image. I can drag that here underneath and then just kind of scale this down to something like this, just kind of fill in that background. And what I'm also doing here is just kind of layering in my various elements. So I'm dragging in my boat and I thought here it'd be kind of interesting if the boat sat above the paper tear and I sort of scaled this down maybe and sort of had this, made it look like it was coming out underneath. So it's, it's sitting on the ocean, but it's sort of then moving over the top of the paper tear effect over here. I can also add a drop shadow to this. And what I can also do if I have that layer selected, I can also just add a mask so it runs along the edge of my paper tear effect. So we kind of get that, you know, it looks like it's sort of coming out from underneath that layer. And then we're kind of ready to add some text. I think we're gonna add some text up here. So we can have, uh, say, uh, text, which I'm just gonna select here. And I can go over to my character menu. Now when adding any sort of text, you wanna basically think about you know, only using two fonts. So if I'm using, say, Helvetica here, I could also use, say, a different font. If I had text underneath that, I could think about using a different font. 
or you can use the same font, but just use say a different weighting for that. So for here, I might use say a light. If I selected that and I made this light, then if I duplicated that and dragged it down, what I could also do is also add another sort of line, line of text down here. And I can make this one say extra bold. So we've got two different font weights. That's one thing that you'll notice Vox does when they're creating their style. So this is just general design principles, but generally when you're picking text, you wanna try and stick to either two types of text or use one typeface, but then use a different weight for, for using for titles or where you want basically to draw your viewer's attention into. Something else you could also do is come in here and basically add, say, some color to that second line. Now, when selecting colors, this is why it's really important to sort of lay out your animation. If you watch any sort of Vox videos, you'll notice they have very simple color palettes. Now your color palettes can change between each video. You don't have to create the, the same consistent look across every video, but you just don't wanna be using lots of different colors. It becomes very confusing unless your animation really calls for it. In most cases, you're gonna find, just keep it really simple to either two or three colors. It's much easier just to design one frame so that we kind of get a really good idea of how this overall animation is going to work together. So don't just zoom your camera and create the text and then zoom the camera and start creating the rest of the animation. Think about creating an entire frame and then you can always add your animation after. One thing that Vox do and this sort of design here is you'll notice that they go for a lot of negative space. So it's a lot of this, you know, blank space in their images. And that really helps create a really clean look, but it draws your eye into the things that are either colored or the areas that they really want you to focus in on. So like this image, for instance. And for instance, if they're using say a white background, they tend to go for a bit of a light sort of whitewash over the whole thing. So you can also do that by just adding, say going up here and adding a hue and saturation. And you can just add some lightness and maybe drag down on the saturation. See how it's starting to give it a bit more of that sort of desaturated look. Again, this can help sort of draw your eye into where you want your viewers to be looking. And it can also help just kind of create more of a consistent look across your image. Something else they also do, which is really iconic to Vox is they create a lot of lines. And as you know from anyone who's done my animation master course, we go through stroke animations a lot, but you can create those by coming up here. I'm just gonna select say a dark color here, maybe like a black. And what I want to do is just sort of create a line that sort of runs like this. If you click away and then click back again, you can basically just create all of these lines on one layer. Now this is really important because when we come to animating this, you'll see why in just a minute, we can animate all of these on one layer. Now one way of animating these layers is we can just come in here and add a trims path. And then we can basically just animate all of these on at once. If I turn that off, you can see we get that animation sort of playing out. If we start animating this on, we can also just right click on these, make them easy ease to help soften out that animation. But one other thing you can also do is then you can just come up here and you can control the line thickness of all of those lines. I can even make them slightly lighter. And one other thing that a Vox also do, I notice, if they were say creating this paper tear effect, what they also do is they'll try and incorporate that say into the text styles or the other images that they're creating or even lines. So you'll notice here if I zoom in, it's got a really hard edge. We want it to sort of match closer to this. So one thing you can do is you could add say the rough and edges here and you could just drag this right down. So it kind of creates a bit more of an interesting sort of look here to match more in line with my image. These little techniques are things that Vox have in their animations that have really become iconic to their videos. The other thing is they use a lot of text animation. Now, one quick way of doing that is just coming up here to the animation presets. You can come down to text. There's a whole heap 
that are built in here under the different categories. But if I just use the typewriter, which is one of the more popular ones they use, I can add this to the animation. I can even bring this up here, move this back, and I can even just make this easy ease. And if I go into the graph editor with that selected, I can basically just drag up on that. It's gonna smooth out that animation. So we kind of get, you know, it's not like a constant sort of animation, like a linear, it's more like an exponential curve. So it just creates a, a lot smoother style of animation. We could then copy and paste that onto the top layer of text. And there you go, we've already starting to put this animation together. The other thing that, that they do is they use a lot of camera animation. So one way of doing that is you can create a null object. I go through this a lot in my Animation Master course about all the different methods of doing camera animation, but you could also just create a camera. But for this one, we're just gonna create a null object and we're gonna parent all of these layers to that null. And back here, I'm just gonna hit P on my keyboard, create a position keyframe and an S for scale. And I'm just gonna go back here towards the start. And I just wanna drag in on this. If you need a little bit of extra background, you can always just come up here and add the motion tile. Drag that to the top. You can mirror the edges and then just drag up on the height. That's just gonna help hide that edge. And the other thing that they also do is they also create a lot of that smooth camera movement. Now I can go into these properties down here and I can basically drag up on these points to really help kind of smooth out. And with the scale and position, I'm just gonna animate these to have a bit more of an easing in and then sort of faster towards the end. You can also drag these out by just selecting them here and dragging them out together. That's gonna to create a bit more of that sort of softened animation look. This is something that Vox do a lot in all of their videos just to kind of create that much smoother camera movement. They do use a lot of camera movement, but it's very precise on where they want you to focus. So if they have text, they generally start on that one thing that they're talking about, and then they'll zoom the camera out to lead you into the other part of whatever they're talking about. So if I was introducing this subject, I would start on my text line, and then I'm zooming out to illustrate whatever it is that I'm talking about. It's just a simple example of you know using the camera placement. You don't just have to have a slow zoom in over the whole image. Because here, you don't, you don't really know immediately where to look. Whereas just this simple camera movement, I know straight away I'm reading that text. Then as the camera's panning out, my eyes naturally lead into this part of my image. It's just something that you wanna think about when designing your own animations. The other thing that they also do, which is really iconic, is they add what's called a posterized time effect. So the posterized time effect you add by creating an adjustment layer and you basically just search for time, posterized time, and you can drop this down to say like 12. All this is doing is just saying, look, I want you to play back at this frame rate. So if you're using say 24, you could set this down to 12 and it's gonna play back at sort of that half frame rate sort of look. This is something that's really iconic that Vox do in pretty much all of their videos. And it's really, really effective. You can add that as an adjustment layer of your entire animation or any animation that you've done to get that look. It's really, really effective. And then from this point, it's really just kind of animating in these last few elements. So generally what I find with a lot of their animation, they'll start with it being as clean as they possibly can. So they start with almost a blank page like here, and then they animate in what they want you to read. So it's either the text or an image if they want you to focus on that. Then they start bringing in the other elements. If we look at this animation, see how we've got this already in our frame? You can see it, it's a little bit more cluttered on screen. So you want to basically try and whenever you can, animate those individual things in when you need them. So for instance, here, we would take this water layer I'd hit Y on my keyboard to basically move that anchor point. Then I can create a scale keyframe somewhere around here, create another one there, and then just drop this down to zero. 
So we kind of get that animation up like that. And the other thing we can also do is do the same here with our boat. Start that back there. Create a scale keyframe there and here. And we sort of get both of those animating in as the camera is sort of pulling back. You can also go through and make them easy ease and then animate the graph if you want it a lot smoother. But something else that you can also add in which Vox use a lot is motion blur. You can add motion blur for all of your layers or for just specific layers or just the layers that you want to blur but it'll help sort of soften out that entire animation. And one last thing that I also did is I added another line down here on the bottom by just duplicating this, dragging it down the very bottom. But for this line in particular, just using the overall weighting of this graphic, I really want the focus to be on this part when the camera zoomed out. So all I did then is it kind of led me to just drop the opacity of that layer. So I hit T and just dropped it down to like 50%. If I bring this all the way up, just turn that off, you can see it kind of makes it a little, again, a little bit more cluttered. So just by reducing the opacity of that layer, straight away we kind of drawn more into this part. The same can be said if you drag all of these layers down, see straight away that our eye is more drawn into this section. So this is a good example of where using opacity of your objects or your graphics to help again draw the eye of that viewer. Everything that you're doing in animation is to back up what is being said throughout your video. So like the story is obviously the most crucial aspect of it. The video should never be carried by the animation. The animation is secondary to that story, right? Your script is the most important aspect of your video. It will help hold the viewer's attention longer throughout the video, but you need to be careful about just overloading your, your videos with animation. And I think that's one thing that Vox do really, really well when you look at a lot of their animation. Their whole design and layout is very clean, but all of their camera movement and graphic placement is very precise. They might not be doing overly complex animation for all their videos, but they really, they're getting you to focus on whatever is being said to really back up the points they're making throughout that video. Now this wasn't an overly complicated animation to learn, but hopefully you've learned a few of the basics around creating any sort of animation. Now, if you wanna learn more about that, as I said, you can check out my Animation Master course. In that, I walk you through over 50 different animations that you can create, and it's gonna basically teach you how to use After Effects from scratch and learn how to create your own animations. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.